FNDE 101 Seminar Part 1. Dr. N.M. Kalugam Pitya, Department of English, University of Peradeniya. Let's first take a look at what are called verb tenses. What are verb tenses? Verb tenses are what enable us to locate an idea that we express in time. The time matters. The time of an idea or the time that an idea expresses matters. And it is the verb tenses that allow us to do that. As we know, we engage with at least three different times, broadly speaking. Hmm? Three different times, the present time, the past time, and the future time. And it is the verb tenses that allow us to express these different times in the sentences that we utter, in the ideas that we convey. First, take a look at the present time. In English, there are four different verb tenses that allow us to express the idea of the present time uh, and those are the simple present tense, the present progressive tense, the present perfect tense and the present perfect progressive tense. Let's take a look at a sentence like, I study Hindi every day. This is a habitual or repeating action because this is something that I do as a habit. Or it is an action that repeats itself on a regular basis. And how, would, how do we know this is something that repeats itself on a regular basis? sentence says every day. This is something I do every day. Hmm? So I studied Hindi a week ago. I studied Hindi yesterday. I'm studying Hindi today. I'll be studying Hindi tomorrow. I'll be studying Hindi day after tomorrow, next week, next month. So that way this is something that I do on a regular basis. And if you take a look at this diagram, there's past, there's now, there's future. And those tiny cross marks uh, indicate the points in time when the studying of Hindi happens. And as you can see, you can see, we can see these cross marks starting from the past, going through now or present, into the future. Hmm? To express an idea like this, we use the simple present tense. The sentence, I study Hindi every day, is an example for the simple present tense. I am studying Hindi today. Hmm? Now here, once again, it's about studying Hindi, but here the key word is today, which means the emphasis is on now. I'm studying Hindi today. And this sentence expresses a current action, an action that is happening currently at the present time. It does not talk about the situation say a couple of days ago the same way it does not talk about what will happen in a couple of days in the future hmm? the focus is on the current time the current moment it could be just the, the current day um, or around that time so if, if we use the same diagram to understand uh, this idea, 
As you can see, those tiny cross marks are only around now or the present time. Hmm? There are no, like those cross marks are not to be seen uh, for the past section or the past time on this diagram. Neither are those to be seen uh, in the future. So the focus is on the current time. Something to be kept in mind is it doesn't have to be just today. Because I could also say I'm studying Hindi this year. And this year, as you know, is a long period of time. But when you say this year, we are separating that particular period of time from the past years, the previous years, or the years that are to come. So in that sense, once again, in a context like that, uh, the current moment refers to the full present year period. Hmm? So what needs to be kept in mind is, as opposed to the simple present tense, or the sentence that we uh, took a look at earlier, this one focuses on current action. Hmm? Something that is happening at the current moment. Hmm? This is called the present progressive tense. The third sentence is, I have studied since 2010. Here, the focus is on an action that began in the past but continues to be true. It started in the past and it is happening even now. So on the diagram, it would be something like this. The first time it happened is in the past. What is this past moment? 2010. And starting from 2010, it has been happening till now. It could happen, it could continue into the future, uh, but we don't know uh, uh, whether that's going to happen uh, for sure. The focus is on the fact that it started in a particular time, at a particular point in time in the past, and it has been happening till the present moment. And this is the present perfect tense. The fourth sentence is somewhat similar to the third sentence. Uh, the fourth one is, I have been studying Hindi all morning. Hmm? I have been studying Hindi all morning. Here we are looking at an action that began in the past but is continuing now. And there is an emphasis on the fact that it is still happening. So this sentence is something that, uh, that is uttered in the morning itself. And it says, I have been studying Hindi all morning. It started at some point in the past, maybe early in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. And I'm still studying. All this morning, I have been studying Hindi. And the focus is on the now, the present moment at which the studying is happening. Now remember, in the earlier sentence, in the earlier example, the focus was on the starting point and the entire duration from that starting frame point uh, to the present moment. Here, once again, we are talking about something that started in the past and continued to the present moment. And what is different here is the primary focus now is on the fact that it is still happening. And the sentence or the tense that allows us to do this, convey this idea is present perfect. 
progressive tense. Now let us look at the verb tenses in English that allow us to express the past time. What are these tenses? The simple past tense, the past progressive tense, the present perfect tense, the past perfect tense, past perfect progressive tense, and also these expressions used to and would. Those are not really tenses, but expressions that allow us to mark an idea uh, for the past time. Let's first take a look at um, this sentence. I wrote a letter at 8 a.m. It gives a particular moment in time and the verb is in the past tense. Hmm? And this sentence refers to something that has happened in the past. It does not have anything to do with the present moment. This is something that happened in the past and now it's part of uh, history. Hmm? So on the diagram we have past, now and future and 8 a.m. as you can see is in the past and there's only one mark that you can see on the diagram and uh, it has nothing to do with the present moment. It started in the past, happened in the past and ended in the past. This is what we call the simple past tense. The second example under this category of tenses or uh, sentences is I was writing a letter when you called. I was writing a letter when you called. And this is a past action that was happening when it was interrupted by another action. Hmm? Now in this sentence there are two actions. What are those two? Writing a letter and you calling me. Two different actions. And here the focus is on the first action that was happening while the second ep or, or when the second action took place. I was writing a letter when you called. See, we are not saying I wrote a letter when you called. The sentence is I was writing. I had started it in the past and it was happening for a while and then you called. Something like this on the diagram. The writing of the letter started at some point in the past and it was happening for a while and then you called. And now the focus is on the fact that the first action was happening when the second action interrupted. And this is an example for the past progressive tense. Something was progressing until something else happened. Next, take, let's take a look at uh, this conversation, this dialogue between Ramani and Vidya. Ramani asked the question, how long have you worked at Carpet World? Carpet World um, is, a, is a store, a shop. Hmm? How long have you worked at Carpet World? And Vidya says, I have been there for 18 years. In fact, 
I've worked there longer than any of my supervisors. Next, Ramani says, what do you do there? Vidya says, I used to work on the assembly line, but since 2010, I have been with the sales force in the front office. So we are talking about somebody having worked at um, a particular store for an for uh, for a period of time. Hmm? So if you look at this, and if uh, we are talking about a past action or situation that even continues now. Hmm? So on the diagram, Vidya started working at the carpet world at some point in the past and then she has continued to work there till now. Even in the future she might work there. But now the focus is on the starting point in the past and the fact that it has continued up to the present time. Hmm? This, as we have already seen, is an example for the present perfect tense. Now, we have already talked about the present perfect tense as a tense that expresses the present time. And the name, the present perfect tense itself, has um, the word present in it. So, it's about the present time. Hmm? But here, we are using the same tense to talk about uh, a past period of time as well. What is the past period of time we are talking about here? From the time she started working at the carpet world to the present moment. Earlier we talked about the same tense with a focus on um, on uh, the present time that this tense marks. But at the same time, this tense also gives us a sense of the time period in the past that the action we are talking about engages with. In that sense, the present perfect tense also enables us to mark an idea for the past time. Next, we have a conversation with, between Nasri and Kamal. Nasri says, it's hot in here. Why don't you turn on the air conditioner? And Kamal says, actually, I have just turned it on. We have to wait a few minutes to feel it. By the way, can I help you with the reports? Nasri says, thanks but I have already finished them. Here they are. Hmm? Now here we are looking at a recent past action that is important to the current situation. So something that has already happened in the past, it's not happening anymore. Uh, but this action that happened in the past is important to the present moment. So, as you have seen, uh, Kamal, so Nasvi wants the air conditioner to be switched on, and Kamal says, I have already done it, I have just turned it on. Hmm? So, that is something that Kamal did in the past, a couple of minutes ago. He is not doing it anymore because it's already switched on. But here, so technically, he could have said, I just turned it on. But here, the sentence we have is, I have just turned it on. Why do we say, I have just turned it on? Because it happened in the past, but 
it is still important switching on the air, on the air conditioner is important to the present moment i did it in the past but its effect is felt at the present moment as well the same with the next idea hmm? can i help you with the reports and then nasri says but i have already finished them instead of saying i finished them he says i have already finished them which means the the reports are ready they are done i finished them in the past but when you say i have finished them that means even though it happened in the past it is till important to the current moment hmm? so we are talking about something that happened in the past it's not happening anymore but what happened in the past is of relevance to the present moment this is once again the present perfect tense now the focus is no longer on something that has been happening hmm? from the past to the present moment we are talking about something that happened in the past and it's not happening anymore but the influence or the impact of what happened in the past is still relevant so present perfect tense here we have a conversation between ravi and jasmine ravi says darshini has just got back from china she told me she had a great time jasmine that's wonderful news she must be tired that was really a long trip ravi i wonder how many hours it is from here to china have you ever gone there Jasmine no i have never gone there but my uncle had traveled there many times in fact he went there last month he had to go there on business now if you look at uh, uh ravi's second response and jasmine's last statement um, what's in red indicates past experience and the time is indefinite past on the diagram we are talking about this circled region which is the past time up to now now when you say have you ever gone there and no i have never gone there we are talking about the past time obviously this person has not been to china so we are not talking about something that happened in the past but the experience we are talking about belongs in the past time because the question is whether you have gone to china so far in your life up to this point and the response is no i have never gone to china i have never gone there what we are talking about is the past time up to the present moment up to the present moment what is said here is correct hmm? but we are not referring to a particular point in time in the past this is another way in which the present perfect tense indicates the past time next we have a conversation between saman and raja saman says we don't have much time are you almost ready raja give me just a few more minutes saman saman what about the annual report and the salary sheets have you finished them yet raja i have already finished the salary sheets 
but I haven't finished the annual report yet. I only need a few more minutes. Now here the focus is on the word yet and yet uh, marks past indefinite action. Hmm? Uh, so have you finished them yet? Yet is a reference to the present moment in time uh, and the focus is on the entire past up to that present moment and that is why we say we are talking about the past indefinite time indefinite past time there is a past indefinite action I have already finished the salary sheets but I haven't finished the annual report yet so up to now I have not finished the annual report it may have started at some point but what we know for, for sure is that it has not finished yet. It has not happened yet. Hmm? Now if you look at the broader statements in which the word yet has been used, the first one is, have you finished them yet? As you can see, it is a question. And the second instance is, I haven't finished the annual report yet. It is not a question. It is a sentence which is in the negative. It gives the negative meaning because we are saying I have not. I haven't. So the word yet appears in question forms, in questions and in negative sentences. So here in this case, we are talking about, the focus is on, once again, the entire past uh, period up to the present moment. Whether something has happened, whether what we are referring to has happened up to this point. So once again, present perfect tense is used with the word yet to refer to the past time, to mark the past time. Now the conversation is between Vibhu and Lily. <clears throat> Vibhu says, how is the movie that you went to see last night? Lily, don't waste your money. That was the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. Vibhu, wow, I'm surprised. You know, it's the most expensive movie that anyone in Hollywood has ever made and the underlined words show that we are talking about what are called superlatives hmm? if you take an adjective uh, for example if you take the uh, the adjective happy we have the comparative form happier she is happier than him raja is happier than Kamal. Hmm? That's the comparative. But here we are talking about the superlative, which in this case would be happiest. Hmm? Uh, and in this case, in these examples, the focus is the past, as shown on this uh, diagram, but it is indefinite past. It could be any point in the past time. Hmm? You know it's the most expensive movie that anyone in Hollywood has ever made. So maybe that movie was made at the point marked by the first cross or the second cross or the third cross. Hmm? Uh, but the point is, what is being said here is up to the present moment this is the worst movie that anyone has ever made. Worst. Hmm? Or the most expensive anyone has. So this has happened in the past. Which point in time in the past? We don't know. What we know is up to this point, this is the most expensive and the worst. So here... Once again, we see the present perfect tense 
in operation. Now the conversation is between Siva and Jen. Siva says, is that the third paper that you have had to write for that class this semester? Jen, yes, but it's the first paper that the teacher has asked us to complete on the computer. Siva, so what are you worried about now? Jen, I'm not good at using the computer. Siva, you have to practice. This seems like the hundredth time that I have told you that you need to practice. Hmm? If you look at the underlined words, we see things like the first, the third, the hundredth. Hmm? And the time in focus is the past. Within the past time, we are looking at indef indefinite points uh, within that broad past period. Now, on the diagram, it would be uh, in the past and the series of things started happening at some point and they have continued. So, in the case of the first statement by Siva, is that the third paper that you have had to write. So, the first paper, having had to write the first paper is the starting point of that series. The first point, paper had to be written, the second paper had to be written, and now we are talking about the third paper. So, it's a series of things we are looking at. Yes, but it's the first paper that the teacher has asked us to complete on the computer. So once again, we are talking about a different series now. Yes, this is the third paper, but this is the first one that we have to do on the computer. There may be a second one, third one later, who knows. But this is the first. So once again, we are talking about a series of things. Hmm? And finally... This seems like the hundredth time I have told you that you need to practice. I have been telling you. Mm -hmm. And this is the hundredth time. So the first thing, maybe the first thing, the first time was uh, five months ago. Mm -hmm. And from that onwards, I have been telling you to practice. And this is the hundredth time. So, once again, we are looking at a series of events, series of things. And this is the hundredth time which is happening right now. So, here too, what is being used is the present perfect tense. Next, we have a conversation between Shakira and Nadun. Shakira says, can you believe it? There's another test next Monday. Nadun, yes, it's unbelievable. We have had six tests so far this month. Shakira, you know, in my history class, the teacher has given only one test this semester. Nadun, well, that's not good either. If you did badly on that one test, then your grade for the course is in trouble. Shakira, maybe so. But I have had a lot of classes like that here. And the focus is on the repetition of an action before the present moment. Hmm? And uh, the exact time, exact point in time um, at which this action happened is not important. So on the diagram, it started happening at some point in the past, the beginning time, the starting point is not very important. What is important is the fact that this has been happening over a period of time until now. Hmm? Um, in the first instance, we are talking about the sixth te test. So in, the, in a series of tests, this is the sixth test. When the first one happened is not important. What we are looking at is the fact that there have been six tests so far. Hmm? In the other class, 
there has been only one test when that test happened is not <clears throat> in focus that's not what we are talking about what is important is so far only one test happened has happened so this again is an example for the present perfect tense used um, in a way to mark the past time. The next sentence is slightly different from what we have been looking at so far. I had written the letter before you called. So far, the form of the word we had was, I have, have. But here it's, I had written the letter before you called. With this, we are talking about a past action that was completed before a second past action happened. So as you can see, in this sentence, there are two past actions. One is writing the letter. And the second one is you calling. Hmm? So past action that was completed, which is writing the letter was completed before a second action, second past action happened. The second past action is you calling. So by the time you called me, I had written the letter. So on the diagram, two actions, both are in the past. The first one is the writing of the letter and the second one is you calling. So by the time the second action happened, the first action had already happened. So the focus is... Um, on the past and these activities have nothing to do with the present moment and this is called the past perfect tense because the first action which is in the past had been completely done or finished by the time the second action took place past perfect tense. The next sentence is, I had been writing a letter when you called. I had been 
writing a letter when you called. As you can see, there are two actions in this sentence. One is writing of a letter and the second is you calling. Now here the focus is on an action that began in the past before a second past action happened. An action that began in the past and was continuing until a second action happened. And the focus or the emphasis is on the duration of the first action. So it's something like this. On the diagram, the writing of the letter began in the past and it's, it uh, kept going on for a while and then the second action happened. What is the second ac action? You calling. So the point here is, what we are saying here is, by the time you called, I had been writing the letter. So once again, we are talking about an action that started in the past and was happening for a while until a second action took place. And the focus is on the entire duration, the entire period within which this action uh, was taking place. This is an example for the past perfect progressive tense. As the last examples for the past time, let's take a look at the expressions used to and would. Now used to um, conveys two slightly different meanings. The first one is the idea that a past action happened repeatedly, but it is no longer usually done now. Hmm? So we are talking about something that happened on a regular basis. Something that happened repeatedly in the past, <coughs> but we don't know whether it's happening now. It, it usually does not happen now. So the example would be, when I was a teenager, my sister and I used to play cricket every weekend. Hmm? It may be the case that even now, my sister and I play cricket sometimes. But in the past, when I was a teenager, this is something that we did on a regular basis every weekend. So clearly, we are talking about the past time. Hmm? Uh, a related meaning, a past fact that is no longer true. Once again, we are talking about something that happened in the past, but it is no longer true. When I was a teenager, my family used to live in Brazil. When I was small, when I was a teenager, we lived in Brazil, but that is no longer the case. We no longer live in Brazil. And that is the idea that we convey when we say, when I was a teenager, my family used to live in Brazil. And then, would. It expresses just one idea, which we found uh, on the earlier slide as well. The idea that a past action happened repeatedly, but it is no longer usually done now. When I was a teenager, my sister and I would play cricket every weekend. Earlier we said, when I was a teenager, my sister and I used to play cricket every weekend. Uh, and now, the same meaning we convey when we say, when I was a teenager, my sister and I would play cricket every weekend. So with the word used to or the expression used to and would, we are talking about the past time. Hmm? 
Next, let's take a look at the verb tenses and the expressions that allow us to express the future time. Hmm? What are those tenses and expressions? The expression be going to and then the tenses simple future tense, present progressive tense, simple present tense, future progressive tense, future perfect tense, future perfect progressive tense. The first sentence, we are going to fly to New York tomorrow. We are going to fly to New York tomorrow. And here we are talking about an event in the future, especially one that has already been planned. Hmm? Now, if you take this sentence, example sentence, we are, are is the present tense form of the be verb. Hmm? She is, we are. It's the present tense form. And here, this present tense form, coupled with the expression going to, so we have are going to, is used to indicate the future time. So on the diagram, uh, we are at the present moment, and the event that we are talking about is scheduled to happen in the future. And that's why that cross mark is in the future. Hmm? We are going to, now we are here, and we are going to fly to New York, which is going to happen in the future. So are going to, which is uh, a form of be going to, indicates the future time. The next example sentence, if the weather clears up soon, the flight 105 for Mumbai will depart from this gate about an hour from now. If the weather clears up soon, the flight 105 for Mumbai will depart from this gate about an hour from now. Here the focus is on the word will will depart and we are talking about a situation an event in the future especially one that is scheduled hmm? or expresses strong desire to do something so it is the same diagram as the one before for be going to we are now we are in the present moment and we are talking about something that is scheduled to happen in the future and what is this uh, thing that is scheduled to happen? The flight 105 for Mumbai will depart from this gate, which is in the future. This is the simple future tense. The next example sentence is, we are flying to Hong Kong tomorrow. Now here, are as we said before, is in the present form. Hmm? Are flying. But this implies or indicates an event that's going to happen in the future. How do we know it's going to happen in the future? Because the word tomorrow marks the sentence for the future time. So are flying in that sense indicates the future time. So, we are in the present moment, we are now, and in the future, we are doing something. Hmm? Uh, and this marks the future time. This is present progressive tense. Even though it is present, it is used in a manner it marks the future time. The next is flight 78 to Kathmandu departs from this gate about an hour from now. The focus is on the word departs. Hmm? Depart, departs, 
which is the present tense form of the verb. And this implies a future action marked by a specific future adverb. The future action marked by a specific future adverb. The future adverb is an hour from now. From now, within an hour's time. It departs. So even though the verb is in the present form, it implies a future time. We are in the present form and we keep the verb in the present tense. But within the context of this sentence, it implies the future time. So just like the earlier example, this also marks the sentence for the future time. And this is simple present tense. The next example is, if the weather clears up soon, we will be able to play volleyball. If the weather clears up soon, clears, once again, the present tense form. Hmm? If this happens, we will be able to play volleyball, which is clearly in the future tense. Now here we are looking at a future action in a dependent clause. Now this sentence is made up of two clauses. The first one is what you call a dependent clause. The second one is an independent clause. So, if the weather clears up soon is a dependent clause. Why is it a dependent clause? It has the form of a sentence, but it needs the second clause uh, to function meaningfully. In other words, you can't just say, if the weather clears up soon. That's not a sentence in itself. It has the appearance of a sentence, but it's incomplete. And that's why we call it a dependent clause. So in, in a dependent clause, the verb kept in this present tense form could indicate the future time. If the weather clears up soon, so it is something that uh, will happen in the recent future but it's kept in the verb is kept in the present form if the weather clears up soon we will be able to play volleyball hmm? so the weather clearing up happens in the future and playing volleyball also happens in the future now, playing volleyball is clearly kept in the future tense, um, but clearing of the weather clearing up is kept in the present tense. Even though it is kept in the present tense form, it indicates, it implies future time. So, once again, the simple present tense used in this particular fashion would imply the future time. If you call at 8 p.m., I will be watching news. If you call at 8 p.m., I will be watching news. Now here, the focus is on the independent clause. I will be watching news is an independent clause because even without the first part, which is if you call at 8 p.m., that particular, uh, the second part of the sentence would still make perfect sense. Gramma it, it, will, it is uh, a grammatically correct sentence. I will be watching news. Hmm? But the first part of the sentence is a dependent clause because that in itself cannot exist as a, as a sentence. The second part can. Hmm? I will be watching news. An action that will be taking place at some point in the future. At some point 
in the future. So on the diagram, uh, we are talking about an action that has not started yet. So it has nothing to do with the future time. It is something that is in the future. I will be watching news. See, it's happening. And when that is happening, the other action will happen, which is if you call at 8 p.m. So both watching news and calling happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And this is an example for future progressive tense. Because in the future, we are talking about the action of watching news happening for a while. It is happening for a while. It has been happening for a while. When, oh, it will be happening for a while when the second action happens or the other action interrupts. Future progressive. It is happening. Next example. By the time you are 50 years old, you will have visited 50 countries. By the time you are 50 years old, you will have visited 50 countries. Once again, the focus is on the independent clause. An action that will be finished by a specified time in the future. So on the diagram, both these actions are in the future. They have nothing to, to do with the present time. You turning 50 years old is something that will happen in the future. You are maybe now 35. We are talking about a time when, the time when you will be 50 years old. And the other action is, you finish visiting 50 different countries. You haven't finished visiting 50 different countries yet. Maybe you have visited 2 or 5 or 15 countries but in the future there will be a point by which you will have visited 50 countries hmm? so when you turn 50 years old you will have visited 50 countries both these actions are in the future uh, by the time the action described in the first clause, which is the uh, uh, dependent clause, the action mentioned in the second clause or the independent clause will already have been completed. And this is an example for future perfect tense. By the time I see you again, I will have been working at this institute for 30 years. By the time I see you again, I will have been working at this institute for 30 years. Here we are talking about how long an action has been happening at a future point in time. Now. The focus is on the duration, the duration of that action. In other words, uh, on the diagram, working for 30 years at the institute, it is in the future. Hmm? And I see you also in the future. So when I see you in the future, you will have been working for 30 years at the institute. Hmm? Uh, so it's not about now. Maybe you, are, you have started working in the institute already. But we are talking about a future reference point. What is this reference point? I see you. Hmm? By the time I see you again which is in the future, you will have been working at the institute for 30 long years. You haven't 
been there for 30 years so far but when I see you next time you will have been there for 30 years so both actions are in the future time and this is an example for future perfect progressive tense